So I've gotten a bunch of questions on the REAP. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys what the REAP is. I'm gonna give you a basic idea on how to defend it. Um, focusing on IBJJF style rules, because again, if you're if you're in a, 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 posi- or a tournament that allows leg locks, or if you're training with leg locks, then the position changes based upon that. But a lot of you guys have asked about the REAP, specifically for IBJJF tournaments, so I'm gonna talk about what it is and how you can defend it. As always, this is my lovely assistant, Mr. Adam Wilson. So guys, before I get into the reap, I want to sort of share, you know, back in my day, she was gonna give you guys a quick jiu-jitsu history lesson. The reap was not always a thing. Like when I was a white belt, there was no such thing as a reap. I remember it like it became a thing around brown belt or black belt where someone was like, you can't reap. I'm like, what is what is a reap? I don't know what that is. And someone had actually had to show me what it was. I'm like, you can't do that anymore? Why not? And you know, whatever. But back in my day, it was the neck crank. So, like with the neck crank, I remember guys, all the wrestlers would come into jiu-jitsu and they would grab and they would can opener people and they would just try to like crank the neck. Um, And then eventually they started using it for like opening the guard there, you know, and when the guy would unlock the guard, he would try to pass. But they would call that super quick. There were tons of tournaments where guys got called on that neck crank. Um, you know, it, it's a relatively easy move to, to defend, but back in the day, people were having trouble with it, and so they, they sort of banned it. Um, and you know, I remember there was even a tournament where I got caught in a triangle like this, kind of a loose triangle here, and I was coming around like this position, and I was cupping the guy's neck, and I'm driving the position in, and they called me for a neck crank. I was like, what do you mean a neck crank? I'm passing the guard. <laughs> I get up and my opponent, he's with me too. He's like, dude, he goes, he wasn't cranking my neck. He was like, he was going, we were trying to tell the ref and the ref was like, nope, crank the neck, boom. And I feel like that's kind of how the reaps become because basically now it's like, like, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. If you don't know how to defend this position and you're like a blue belt, I mean like, why not? It's so simple. It's, it's not a hard position to defend, especially if we're not even allowing heel hooks and everything else. It's a pretty easy position to defend. Um, but I feel like it's become that because now anytime someone turns, if that foot cuts across, which is the reap, right? So the reap is basically when the knee begins to cave in and that, that foot here goes across the hip bone, boom, that is a reap where that knee's driving in because they say it can cause damage, which it can. We'll talk about that in a second. So the thing is, is I've seen one of my guys, he plays the single leg X, he plays this like egg lock position and he's gotten called for reap several times. One reap was at a, a local tournament, it wasn't an IBJJF, but the guy goes and the guy like turns and does this. He gets called for a reap because the guy pushes it across. I've seen that in a lot of other tournaments as well. And then recently he was competing, he had a good a bite on the ankle and again he's going to try to take the guy over here and set this up or go to X and the guy does this, he goes pulls away and I mean he lifts his body up off the ground and he's turning. the, the foot cuts across and he's kind of long so his foot's about right here they call him for a reap even though it was the guy that pulled away from it so again you've got to be careful if you're playing that reap position okay because um, or not the reap position but if you're playing like the single leg axe ashigarami position from the bottom even from the top you got to be careful because if that foot starts to venture across a little bit depending on the ref like they might call you again just to be clear on it if he rolls this way that's perfectly fine. If he rolls this way, my kneecap is straight on, right? It, it's, there's no pressure on the knee, nothing like that. If he begins to sit to the side here and then pushes this across, my knee is now pushing in, and that's gonna be your reap. So again, coming back to it, angle lock here, this is fine. If this foot goes across, that's really what you're doing. You can push against the hip and that's fine, but if that heel, that foot comes across, that's your reap. That's where that knee begins to cave in. And you know, again, if you're playing like, like attacks in the helix and stuff, that's where you would do that from, right? So that's basically the reap in a nutshell. And again, if you're playing leg locks, it's a different situation, but for just a basic IBGF uh, thing, okay? First thing is knee position. And I'm gonna sort of set this up with a parallel from a De La Hiva. So let's say we're playing De La Hiva. He wants to pull that heel out and he wants my knee to cave in. Similar type position. You never want to let your knee cave in anyway. It's a very, very bad position. Just structurally, this is not going to be good for your knee's health. A lot of things can get tweaked that way, okay? Also, by doing this, if you think about what's happening, Adam pulls this out, he's starting to create an angle on me. He can get me off balance. This is where guys start to work around to the back and start to set up different stuff. So one of the big things in De La Hiva is we want to keep that knee facing out. Not only does it keep, kill the De La Hiva hook here, but we're also driving this knee, keeping our knee in a good position, and at the same time, easier to pass. When we get into this reap position, okay? I don't know why this is so hard, okay? We're here, first things first, don't stand over top of someone. You can grab your ankles, knock you over, right? What we wanna do is we wanna put a lot of weight heavy, because one of the easiest sweeps that they can do is just hip up and take me down, like whoop, right there. 
So I wanna sort of surf right now. So I like to put my back leg here. I'm gonna press heavy on this foot so it's gonna be harder to lift my hip, hip up, okay? I'm not gonna turn. I don't wanna put my knee at risk. I wanna force my knee out here, okay? From here, I like to grab the top of the foot, not the ankle so much. I like to get a hold of the top, right here, the toe and the top of the foot there and peel that sucker off right here. At the same time, controlling the legs here, okay? So a lot of times I'll kind of play this position. From here, there's a lot of different stuff you could do. You could step over and try to get down on top, like just like you're defending here. Sometimes if you get off balance here, he starts to kick me up, I can drop here for a second, still holding this foot, and again, begin to work over top of that knee. But no matter what, just peel the damn foot off, okay? I don't know why we, we'll, as jiu-jitsu practitioners, like we're crying about a reap, and we just can't do that. Why can't we do that, Adam? I don't understand that, it's so strange to me. Again, you know, if you're gonna play jiu-jitsu, you should learn everything. This isn't that, it's not a dangerous position. You just gotta defend it, okay? So from here, again, I like to peel the foot off, very heavy, so my, my body looks something like this. I'm surfing, so my feet are not like this, I've got this foot planted, this foot planted, this one's going this way, this one's going forward. Heavy on that foot, pressing into it, and I have some space. And that back leg, also, just in case you ever have it, if he starts to like knock me out, go ahead and get a good position, start to off balance me a little bit. I'll start to use that back leg, and I'll move it around. So I'm heavy on the front foot, but my back leg can bounce, and it has a little, it can adjust pretty easily, sort of, sort of stop me from losing balance. Let's take a look at it from the back leg here. So again, I can hear. If he starts to move me around, boom, I can start to step around. The last thing, if you're in Adam's position and the guy starts to do this, go ahead and transition to X. Why not, right? X is a good position. You can still sweep from here, and now you're no longer in danger, danger of being called for a reap, okay? Because, again, depending on the ref, the ref is supposed to. If I push, he's supposed to DQ me, but sometimes they don't do it. Sometimes they just got turns, and they'll call you for a reap. So if you feel that person doing this, Transition. And uh, the last little thing, because I know I'm rambling a bunch about this reap thing, but one of the things that one of my students had happened to him is he was in a, uh, in a tournament, big tournament. He was in a leg lock sort of position because my, one of my students plays like some straight ankles and stuff like that. He was in the leg lock position. He's in there playing it. Straight stuff, no big deal. The guy moves his foot across, kind of, it's, it's clever how he did it. Moves his foot across, and then afterwards like, he like kind of ah, makes a noise. The ref calls the match, DQs my student who did not move the foot to, to the reap. And afterwards, it's funny because he got up and winked at his coach. And you know, didn't think anything of it because we watched the match afterwards. Afterwards, my student was talking to another guy who had went against the same guy. And he was like, oh man, he did the same thing to me at this tournament. So again, some guys use it as a tool. I think it's lame. To me, if you do that, I have no respect for your game. Like if that's the way that you want to win, I think that's, that's pretty lame. You know, as warriors, we're supposed to go out there and, and put it on the line and, and test ourselves, not you know, try to game the system in any way we can. Just my thought. Um, but if you guys get in that reposition, keep those things in mind. If you're on the bottom attacking from that single leg X-Ashi position, don't let that foot cut across. If the person starts to transition to single leg, or uh, full on X and other positions so you don't get called for it. And again, if you're on top and someone does it to you, don't start wigging out and freaking out. Plant your feet, keep your body in good position, keep that knee going out so you protect your knee health, and then start to peel that leg off your hip. Simple stuff. So, I'm kind of hyper today, aren't I? I feel like I'm hyper today. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you got something out of it. I'm finished. Adam? Adam.